Welcome, everybody. I'm David Asman in for Neil Cavuto. And now that they have the Republicans number, Senate Democrats are pushing to delay those automatic spending cuts for another three months. And at the same time, they're demanding tax hikes to be in any kind of short term deal they make. Sounds like Groundhog Day. And John Layfield says that would drive the economy into the ground. Maddie Dupler and Ford O'Connell are also joining us now. Lady and gentlemen, thank you for coming in. John Layfield, first to you. First of all, we, we know what the Democrats want. They want more spending and higher taxes any way they can get it. The question is what the Republicans are going to do about it. So far, they've been snookered by these guys since the election. What do you think Republicans are going to do? I think they should tell them you got what you wanted. Now what are you going to do? I, I, if I was Republicans, I'd have done this two years ago. I, look, we, we all knew and we've all said that you're going to get about $40 billion extra dollars by raising taxes on the upper income, the rich, whatever you want to call them. We still have a deficit over $1 trillion. But they said they run on this, just like FDR did, just like Andrew Jackson did. When times are bad, run against the rich, run against the bankers. They raise the taxes on the rich. Now what are you going to do? If I were the Republicans, I'd go on the offense here and say, listen, last year we brought in just about $1.2 trillion in income taxes. We have $1.2 trillion in deficit still. We could double income tax rates on every American and still run a deficit. We have to do something with spending and entitlements. Maddie, I agree that they got to go on the offensive, but the question is how you go on the defensive. I don't think you go on the offensive by immediately saying no. I think the president has, has successfully uh, painted these guys in a corner as just uh, no sayers. That's all they say. You can say, mm -hmm. yes, we want reform. In fact, Mr. President, back in September 2011, you came out with a report of your own on how to revamp our tax system called Plan for Economic Growth and Deficit right. Reduction. In that report, and I am quoting directly from it, they say principles for tax reform. And the w number one issue there is lower tax rates. This is the president right. talking, not Republicans. They say the tax system should be simplified and work for all Americans with lower individual and corporate tax okay. rates and fewer brackets. So say to the president, yes, we're with you, Mr. President. We're not talking about Simpson Bowles here. We're talking about your own words. We want tax simplification the way you said it. Right. And, you know, to go back to something else that President Obama said, he was the one who proposed the sequester to begin with. This is not some idea that Republicans came up with to cut spending to try to force Democrats to get rid of the size of government. The president came to the table in August of 2011 when we were doing this debt limit debate to say, listen, I've got this great idea. Let's do a sequester on domestic and defense discretionary spending. So Republicans shouldn't just say, listen, we're here to play ball. They should say, listen, we're here to play ball on the terms that you set. It is not our responsibility now to draw back the sequester that you said was a great idea just you know just a year ago uh, so they need to hold the president accountable on that first and foremost and on the tax reform side you know the president's going to have a really hard time getting buy-in from all his Senate Democrats some of them may be carrying water for him on this idea but you had the head tax writer on the Senate side Senator uh, Max Bach as a Democrat saying "Ooh, you know I don't know if I really want to give you my my credits and deductions to take away the sequester I want to use that for tax reform so Republicans and Democrats have very very different ideas of what this tax reform should look like, but at the end of the day, the guys on the Hill who are making these laws don't want all the tax credits that they want to use for tax reform yeah. to go to punting the sequester. But Ford, let's, let's leave politics aside. I know it sounds ridiculous, but <laughs> this, this political gamesmanship aside for just a second. Talk about what's good for the economy. It is good for the economy to have a more simplified tax code. It is true that those tax changes in December made the tax code more voluminous, more, more complicated complicated, complex, went in exactly the wrong direction. So why not just say, look, we want a simplified tax code and we'll work with you on it. In fact, we'll even do exactly what you said, which is get rid of the brackets and lower the tax rates. Your words, Mr. President. Well, that, that's exactly right, because what is the biggest problem in the private to grow in the private sector and small business right now? The answer is certainty. And if we simplify the tax code, we're going to have certainty because small businesses will have access to capital, knowing what they'll have to pay for in five years down the line. That is the whole point. The problem is the president is ignoring the private sector. He's concerned mostly about the public sector. And the biggest driver in our debt and deficit is entitlements. And what the president has to do is he's dancing around the issue right now. We have to modernize entitlements. Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security are 62 to 65 percent of, uh, of federal spending, and 10,000 people are turning 65 every day. We can no longer ignore this problem. What he's talking about is ignoring the problem. 
And until we fix that problem, we're going to run astronomical deficits and continue to mount onto our $16 trillion debt. All right. Well, he's not the only one who's dancing, John Layfield. The, the Republicans are doing some <laughs> dances. It's more like that, that French Apache dancing where you grab somebody by the hair and drag them across <laughs> the deck. I mean, Republicans are really going at it. Uh, some people claim the establishment Republicans are going after the, the Tea Partiers, trying to drag them down. Uh, what is likely to happen? Are they likely to fix up their act before these negotiations really begin so that they can come as a united front against the president? Uh, David, look, that is, that's a great question, but to, to bet on this Congress fixing up their own act, I don't care if the Republicans or Democrats, remember this Congress has been the most futile Congress on record by a factor of two the last three years by number of bills passed. I, I don't think these guys can agree on, on absolutely anything, but the one thing that they have in their favor going forward is, look, you raise the taxes on the rich. Now, that, that was political, and that was a home run as far as your, your base, as far as the Democrats. Right. The next tax increases are going to hurt because they're going to be on the rest of Americans. Americans are going to feel them. They're going to be very unpopular. And that's what Republicans need to say. These aren't necessary. We have to deal with entitlements. We have to deal with spending. But they don't necessarily, tax changes, Maddie, don't necessarily have to hurt if they're going in the right direction. That is, if you get rid of some of these deductions. Look, the last tax thing that was, it was I don't even call it a bill because it was just a thing that was put together by <laughs> Republicans and the president uh, about a month ago. I mean, it has, it has so many different uh, little clauses and brackets. Mm -hmm. in. There's one provision that benefits only one company. I mean, that's not what our tax bill is supposed to be. Well, and you know, the thing about modernity is that it has made taxes very easy for all of us, right? We go, we go to, you know, one of the online tax things, we fill out our tax form, we're done for the year. It doesn't seem hard to us, but when you start looking at these changes, we start looking at what happened at the beginning of this year when people are getting their paychecks with a higher payroll tax on it, people start to realize, you know, the effects of people coming out of college who don't have businesses to hire them because their tax burden has ridden. These are things that people feel. So it's not about talking about simplifying as much as it's talking about about having a tax code that's not punitive, that's not complex, that doesn't single out people or businesses, just as you said. And, you know, that's the blueprint we have from House Republicans who have not only had a plan to avert the sequester without tax hikes, but a plan that would allow for that kind of simplification in the code where you're bringing down the overall okay, tax Okay, but burden. Ford, it looks like it looks like it's not going to happen. I mean, based on what the president wants, we know that he's stiff-arming the Republicans every step of the way, that none of their, their attempts at compromise are working. So, if, in fact, we get even more tax increases and no spending cuts, what's going to happen to the economy? The economy is going to be stagnant. Right now, the CBO says growth at 1.4 percent. If we don't rein in our debt and create some sort of certainty, we're going to continue to sputter along because we're ignoring the private sector. And the private sector is key to growth. I do want to say one thing to Maddie's point quickly. The problem with the tax code right now is it's more messed up than college football's BCS. So let's be honest. We really need to fix the whole thing <laughs> now, is. don't we? Well, John Layfield, we got to go. But i got to ask you, you got so many businesses going. I know you're always working on something. Are you going to expand in any way if taxes go up even more? No, because the people that pay the highest corporate tax rate in the world are people like me, small and medium-sized businesses. The big businesses pay the, 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 in the high teens and the low tax rate because they've gotten political favors. By the way, John, you're in Bermuda. Like you're very happy being in Bermuda, but I, you're going to miss out on a great snowstorm. Did you realize that? <laughs> it's a really hey, but it's great, being on, it's great seeing you, though, David. All right. Thank you, John. Thanks, Maddie and Ford. Appreciate it. Coming up, the naked truth.